Stripperon Takare, Banu Shashi Bumi Suto, Buddha Sha Guru Sha Shukra, Shani Rahu Keteva, Sarve Graha Shanti Kara Bhavan Tu <clears throat> Well, greetings and welcome to Cosmic Kev 100, your weekly astro video zine. This one is for October 7th through the 13th or 14th, 2022, and um, of course through the 13th anyhow. And what, what we have this week is we're starting Friday with a moon that's growing, getting pretty close to fall, in a lunar mansion known as Purvabhadra, or Purvabhadrapada. <clears throat> so Purvabhadra is, is in the sidereal constellation of three quarters Aquarius, one quarter Pisces. It's actually in the Aquarius part right now because what I'm referring to here is Vedic astrology or Jyotish, which is a little more astronomically correct, not based on seasons. <clears throat> and um, so what, what are the qualities you might, one might ask about this moon today? Well, Purva Bhadrapada, or Purva Bhadra, is the front end of the funeral cot. So this is like, we're getting towards the last three nakshatras of the zodiac, and this is like, we're ready to go, folks. Yeah. Jupiter brings spirituality and expansion, and that's the, the ruler of this particular nakshatra. The ruling deity is known as Ajikapada, and Ajikapada is like dancing Shiva. And um, it, <clears throat> and it's also like this. There's a release, you know. Um, there's a lot of combustion, and there's a lot of heat, and it can be kind of almost like violent and hard to, <clears throat> sorry, experience this letting go. You know, there's this ultimate letting go and this release that has to happen, and this is sort of. Also, kind of like the second harvest moon, I know, because it's like whichever one's closest to the um, the equinox, whatever full moon is considered the harvest moon. And this one, you know, since the last one was close to two weeks before, and this one's just two weeks afterwards, you know, you could kind of bring some of that quality of harvest moon with... Uh, this purva bedropita moon, <clears throat> and um, well, it's really not going to be when we get to the full moon. That's actually happening Sunday. <clears throat> Man has his water. Man has his water, and um, <clears throat> so Sunday at one fifty-five p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, the moon will be full. So that's Sunday, October 9th. And at that point, the moon's going to be full in Ravati. So Ravati is the crossroads. This is the place where the moon dies, where everything dies, basically. The sun dies and it's reborn again, really. I mean, the sun dies, of course, in, in Libra. And in Western astrology, of course, the sun's in Libra right now. So it's like a debilitated sun. Um, in Vedic astrology... The sun's in Virgo, um, and it won't really be in Libra until like the, the 17th or something. Um, and, but looking at, at this notion, one of the things too is that Libra, you know, Mercury w retrograded back into Virgo, and now it's back into Libra, albeit direct, in, in the western tropical zodiac. Um, in the sidereal Vedic zodiac, both... Um, Venus and Mercury are in Virgo along with the Sun. So right now in the tropical zodiac, Venus and Mercury and the Sun are all together. 
And, you know, Mercury can sometimes act like a benefic. I mean, certainly Venus is a benefic. But um, they're really close. Venus especially to the sun, so it's combust. You really can't see it in the sky. And so we're saying that this is maybe a difficult time for people in relationships. You know, so if you're having a little bit of a difficult time, just, you know, give yourselves a break. You know, allow yourselves to just chill out and realize that, th that nothing is permanent. The only thing that's permanent is change. And there's ultimate chance for reflection, for forgiveness, and there's things you have to do. I mean, we're in the autumn here in the Northern Hemisphere, and this is a time where, you know, if you're, especially if you're north of 35 degrees latitude, you want to get yourself ready for winter, um, for the colder weather and stuff. Anyhow, with that said, we'll talk about Rivati for a second, which is a sidereal... Zodiac's lunar mansion, and it's the end of Pisces, and this is where the moon is going to be full in the, in the constellation, and it's considered the crossroads. So this full moon's at the crossroads. So it'll be peaking Saturday night. You know that'll be the peak, the growing, the waxing full moon. Whereas on Sunday night, by Sunday night, it'll be full, but it will be waning. It will be diminishing in power by then. It's on that diminishing downward cycle. Um, the ruling deity of Ravati is Pushan, and Pushan cow, calls the cows home. And cows in Vedic astrology are somewhat significant of Krishna, too. And Pushan is also kind of a, a foster care energy, too, of adopting others. And it rules maps and calendars and hotels and places of hospitality. And so it's sort of like this abode, this waiting place we go before we're born again, in a sense. Um, now in the Western Zodiac, you know, it's kind of like Danger Will Robinson as of, you know, Saturday night. We will be having a, um, a moon in Aries. And um, the Aries full moon is the most violent full moon in the zodiac I'm like <gasps> really yeah I, I mean i remember one time in southern utah in a really chill town seeing a couple of fights break out in one night under this kind of aries full moon so we have to you know keep that in mind and also though if you look at it in the vedic sense it's a spiritual thing it's about letting things go so that we can prepare for something new that even even though we don't really start things with a full moon the letting go part of this moon is going to allow for us some new perspectives. I think that's something that's good to look at. But it's just like everybody, you know, keep everything chill, keep everything at peace, keep everything at patience. And then we're just going to go right now, one by one, sign by sign for your horoscope, because I love you all so much. And if you know your rising sign and you know your moon sign, you can throw that in. And if they're all different, you get a really amazing mix of possibilities for you this week and and um, you know because we're all not one sign a sun sign there's nobody alive today that has every single planet in, their, in one sign you know <laughs> I mean you got most of them you know if you were born in maybe 2020 February or you know in February of um, 1962 but I, I think beyond that here we are so greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. Now, Jupiter brings expansion. And I think Jupiter and Aries in, in the tropical zodiac is also about growing in education, growing in your mind. Think about how much we develop between zero and seven years old as people. I mean, that is somewhat symbolic of the Aries years of our life. Um, in my own thinking, some would say, you know, younger. Um, and I... I get that, There's, but I, I kind of like to equalize it, you know, say so everybody gets to be up to 84, you know, beyond that it's like you're starting over again. And um, so there's this, there's this newness, there's this freshness coming on. Um, full moon's in your first house. And so as of Saturday morning you wake up and you're kind of like the flavor of of the month this weekend, you know, the flavor of the weekend anyhow. Um, Libra is the flavor of the month. So here we have Mercury 
and Venus and Sun in your seventh house. And I mean, in a lot of ways, Aries is sort of like a universal sign because it's like this is the sign that determines how we make sense of the whole zodiac everything's in order when we have Aries in the first house. So we've got Venus there, we've got Mercury there, we've got the Sun in the seventh house. Everything's about relationships, everything's about negotiation. Seventh house is also ten houses from the tenth house. It's also about your career. How do you get along with people? How are you establishing your business? And a lot of the businesses thrive completely on the holiday season and so there's this sort of revving up that in the next couple months most of the money is going to be made. And so there's, there's sort of an urgency that comes with that. And because of Jupiter bringing good fortune in your first house, and in Dristi, looking at these other planets, albeit Jupiter's retrograde, it's like, how do we release this better karma? How do we release this money? Um, Saturn's in the social house. Saturn's also retrograde. And it's like, Getting together with really good groups of people and establishing something, that's super important as well during this period of time. And um, we want the best. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. So, like, your Venus ruled sign, you know, Venus and Libra, it's not really a picnic for you. It's more like work, you know. And so here we've got the Sun and we've got Mercury all in the sixth house. And Mercury's kind of saying, Hey, you know, there's a change of seasons now. Let's look at our health issues. Uh, let's look at how we serve others and help others. Let's look at how we deal with our coworkers. This is where there's a tremendous amount of energy. Now, we could talk a little bit about the full moon in Aries. That's in a house of loss. So I would say it's best to remain chill. Don't ex overextend yourself this week. You know, there's a sense of loss a lot of times in the 12th house, but it's also a good place to do spiritual work. So if you're going to the ashram or a monastery this week, you're right where you need to be. But otherwise, I'd say this is more of a time to do your homework, help others, and keep, the, you know, put the recreating secondary for this week. Ah, uh, yes. Greetings, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, Mercury in Virgo is a good sign, but Mercury's in Libra now. It's not a bad sign either, because here we've got Sun, Mercury, Venus in the fifth house. Fifth house loves to have fun, you know. Fifth house helps us with our education. The fifth house helps us with our travels. The fifth house helps us with our children. And it really makes communication fun. I know people with Mercury in their fifth house, and they're jokers. They have, they have a lot of fun with wordplay. I like wordplay. I, you know, I'm, I'm a fifth, I'm a third house Lagnesia. Of course, I, you know, I've got this mercurial thing going on with myself, and so that's why I'm here with you today. It's like, well, let's, let's learn about these things together. So, in a lot of ways, the thing about Mercury is you, in your learning, if you have to teach somebody something, you, you learn it. You have to learn it first, so it makes you a better student in some ways when you take the responsibility of teaching it to yourself so you can teach it to others. And, I mean, Venus in the fifth house, ooh, it's heart opening. It's like, ah, there's this love coming through. You know, we want that love to just come through. And I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, by the end of this week, by, um, oh, say... Thursday, Wednesday night, um, Moon's going to go into Gemini, so, you know, you're going to be feeling those, those nice Gemini vibes, you know, and we, we like that, you know, kind of lighthearted and easy going, easy and breezy with the wind. <laughs> well, greetings, Cancer, and welcome to your horoscope. You know, Libra time, it brings you right where you need to be because it's in the fourth house, and the fourth house is your happiness, the fourth house is the house of the mother, it's the house of the moon. I have one astrologer, evolutionary astrologer, Stephen Forrest says the fourth house is the house of the father. Well, generally speaking, it's older adults. In, in Vedic astrology, we'd say it's more attuned to the mother. It's attuned to the moon, and the moon gives us happiness. It's also about fixed assets, too. So, I mean, a lot of Cancers are very security conscious people and they're like worried about where their finances are. And it's really hard. You know, I've got a friend who's um, 
I've got some friends who are cancer rising. Anyhow, I mean, I, I think of people mostly these days in sidereal zodiac terms because um, that's the cosmos, you know, that's not just based on seasons. But, you know, in the more mundane terms, there's a super amount of sensitivity with cancer. And so with all these planets, Sun, Venus, Mercury in your fourth house, you might be feeling more sensitive than usual. You're probably feeling pretty good on Friday because the moon's in water sign in, in the western zodiac. It's in Pisces. It's visionary. Um, over the weekend, things can get really exaggerated with this full moon. And um, that's in your career house. So if you're somebody who has to work in the weekends or you have to make a public appearances somehow in the, over the weekend, you know, it's, it's a little bit intense, you know, and you probably want to meditate and be generous and loving and bring your best self forward, you know, and that way you'll have like the best leadership to do. Um, I think you'll be feeling a lot more stable, you know, come Monday, Tuesday. And, you know, some of the money will start coming through Thursday, Friday. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's interesting, like the third house, if you're a Leo rising, that's, you know, considered the debilitated sun. Um, and yet, at the same time, it's like, this is a place where the ego of Leo gets crushed. <sighs> Why is it? Because we have to negotiate, and we have to work with others, and sometimes we have to put aside that our idea was the best idea. On the other hand, let's say you're in a group art project, like you're the leader of a band. You've got some kind of music project going on with other people. Um, Sun and Libra actually does very well because you have to negotiate a harmony with all these people, so it becomes pretty cool, you know. Um, and I could cite some examples of that, but this is where this is where you do the work too. This is where working with your hands comes from. And the good news is, is that in third house experiences we make a lot of improvements. And so it's just like there's different types of um, Leo rising people. And you know, some of them that are more successful in a lot of ways can look at their, you know, that previous cancer thing and they're helping nurture other people they're helping give support to children they're helping guide others and so if you're giving support to children in education this is great moon the moon being full in aries and also in your um, proverbial ninth house there's like you can reconnect with your father you can reconnect with this kind of higher love with your teachers you could go on some kind of adventure this weekend Actually, travel looks pretty good for you this weekend, and so I think you're going to do okay. Hmm. All right. Well, greetings, Virgo, and welcome to your horoscope. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just kind of honing in on, um, on this kind of energy right here, the Virgo energy and the Virgo trip. Um, hmm. Yeah, what I'm seeing happening here is... Um, we're opening ourselves up to more material abundance, for one thing. We're trying to improve our relationship with our family, with our voice, and with our eating habits. So a lot of Virgos might be going through fasting and say, you know, I just can't be eating junk anymore. Maybe I should give up gluten. I need to give up dairy. You know, maybe I need to give up, you know, red meat or give up, you know, meat altogether or, um, you know, give up soy or, you know, or nuts or you know there's all kinds of things depending on your physical makeup that could be allergens and start you know give up caffeine um, give up alcohol give up sugar you know the more basically unhealthy things for us um, and so we can welcome better health and in that there's a there's an abundance you know there's a trade-off you know we like things to be filled up because it's comfortable. It's like wearing a warm jacket on a cold day. But in that coldness, in that emptiness, we're able to accept warmth and appreciate it more. And so sometimes we have to go through a fast in order to appreciate what's coming. 
And we've got this full moon coming, and it's in the 8th house. And it's like 8th house is something we, it's not in our control. There's a lot of transformation. So my, my gut feeling with Virgo would be the same thing I would have probably said to um, another sign in the zodiac during this time. is like, well, you know, there's a lot of transformation this weekend. And you're not really in control of things. So I think the best thing to do is just stay chill. Let go. Let other people have their power. Let them have their seat. And you know what? You're going to be honored for that. Something good's going to happen. Okay. All right. Greetings, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. And yes, it is true. You are the flavor of the month this week. And having Mercury in the first house gives you natural intelligence. Having Venus in the first house makes you naturally attractive. Having the sun in the first house gives you a strong will to carry out what you need to do and to express yourself with intelligence and full-on wisdom and light. You're aware of your soul purpose this week. This full moon's in your relationship house. So this could spark a lot of different feelings. And... Um, a lot of times I'm, you know, filled with desire and ambition to do things, but then I look at it, you know, in terms of the planets and stuff and say, is this a good time for this? I ask myself, or is this maybe a better time that I chill out right now? Um, I think overall you can do whatever you want, Libra, and that most things are going to work out well for you during this time. I think in a lot of ways it, it, it looks like a very heavily romantic weekend for you. And there's going to be some kind of cosmic relief after the Mercury retrograde and what had happened previous weeks. But, you know, we are heading towards an eclipse in a couple of weeks. And so everybody's just kind of, I'd say, it never hurts to use a little bit of caution. But I'd say for the most part, I mean, everything's a go. Saturn's in your fifth house. And it's like, Sometimes we have to have limits with our children, express boundaries. We have to have limits as to how much art we can make and do right now. And just working within our limits brings such great productivity. Well, hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your horoscope. Now, you know, right now, I mean, there's no planets of Scorpio. <clears throat> and, um, I mean, the, I, I'll say the. Monday and Tuesday will probably be better days for you because of the moon being in Taurus in your seventh house, and so there'll be this sort of like relief. But, um, you know, the full moon over the weekend in your sixth house, that, that kind of seems like obstacles. Um, Libra, Sun, Mercury, and um, Venus, it's like, okay, there's this karma, you know, and this is sort of the harvest of your solar year. You know, this is where we put everything together before you renew things. And of course, we do have a couple of, you know, we've got some, some eclipse energy happening in um, late October and, um, you know, towards early, early mid-November. And so any of you who are born near those times, you know, it's kind of like you're a little bit on high alert, you know, it's like, oh boy, what am I creating? So like what I would say is, Pay your bills. Um, if somebody feels like they've been wronged by you, negotiate with them. Say, hey, what can I do to make this right with you? <sighs> you know, sometimes we have to cut our losses and, um, and eat humble pie. It's not, it's not fun, trust me. Um, but here's the good news. It's like Friday's really nice. Today's a nice day. Um, I'm sure yesterday wasn't too bad either. You know, and so you made some good moves. And... Um, some more good moves are coming. You know, this might not be your, your great weekend, but next weekend I'm pretty sure will be, and you'll get this relief. But it's, it's always best to not be overconfident when things like this happen. Um, you know, Mars is in your eighth house. So there's a lot of transformation going on. And, you know, Mars is going to go retrograde, and that's going to bring... And it's... Mars is going to be flirting with... Um, with Gemini in Western astrology for a long time. And so we need to be kind to others. We need to allow others to have their power. And we also do our spiritual work, do our exploration in the occult and magic on the most high-vibing, white, Holy Spirit, positive side. None of that 
icky, icky black stuff. There's people that are kind of proud of their evil and they make it seem like they're being a badass. I mean, we got plenty of those people out there, folks. They're the ones that control the world right now. We don't really want to do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, you know, giving to others always helps. Greetings, Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope. It's a time of possibilities, you know. Um, you know, Libra w rules your social life. And you're a very social animal. You've got that reputation. Your 11th house is a good house. It's a good house for money. I mean, you could be on a roll. You know, you could host a, a, part, a Tupperware party <laughs> or, or whatever kind of party where you're selling your goods. And I have a feeling you're going to do really well with that with this full moon. Um, you know, you're getting a lot of support from Jupiter being in the 5th house. So uh, your relationship with your children, there's really good results in that that I see, your ability to teach others, to be a performing artist, or to be a good student and educate yourself, all of this is going great. Um, this uh, full moon is going to help it this weekend, so if you were going to some kind of learning seminar, I would say this is good. Um, I One thing I think while you're out socially, realize that not everybody's happy, you know, and I think one of the, uh, I don't want to say this, but you know, sometimes when you tell people to be happy and not feel their, their feelings, it's sort of like a violent thing to do. Even though you want them to be happy and you're, you're not intending something bad, it can actually be kind of an insensitive thing and show how unaware and unconscious you are about what this person's going through. It's always best in these kind of situations to return to empathy. Yeah. So I think right now, as far as neighbors and friends and siblings, they need some empathy right now. You know, check me out in the comments later on if this applies to you. All right. Uh, greetings, Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope. You know, so Saturn is in your second house, so, you know, that's about finances. And now the Sun and um, Venus and Mercury, all in the 10th house of career. You know, so you're getting all this, mm, you know, this could be a promotion for you. Um, this weekend is like, God, I want to stay home. This weekend's like, God, I'd love to help my mother, you know, if, you, if your mom's still alive. It's just kind of important to um, facilitate that kind of um, relationship, help with that relationship. That's part of what's needed right now, um, the home life. Uh, maybe you have assets you need to sell or get rid of. Um, this would be a good weekend to do that, you know, just kind of... It's, you know, this whole thing of downsizing and becoming more of a min minimalist, more is... You know, less is more in a lot of ways because a lot of times we don't own our possessions, they, know, they own us. And, you know, I, I get it. It's easy to hoard. You know, you're like, oh, I could use that. You know, you're, you're kind of telling yourself, I'm resourceful. I know something. I'm going to need that someday. You might not. All right. Going to Aquarius. Another Saturn ruled sign. Saturn in the first house right now. And Uranus and Taurus in the fourth house. So it's like... Are you really comfortable with where you live? Are you, are you debating on a move? And will this move um, facilitate a better social life for you and, and a better life in general? That would be something I would think about. So this full moon weekend affects your siblings, your friends, your neighbors, your environment. I tune into that. Um, opposite of that, though, is um, where, uh, well, I mean, this full moon, pardon me, yes, indeed, is, yeah, in that neighbors and friends. But opposite of that, though, the sun, Mercury, and Venus is in the ninth house. So it's like you're learning a lot right now. You're actually in one of the luckiest places you've been. And, and trust me, last month was rough for a lot of you. I, I, I saw that, you know, and I get that from your... Um, comments and what I've observed. So 
I just want to say it's like something better is coming in and, and you can show up with your best self. You can be generous like a really loving father, like a really good teacher, like a really good Santa Claus, you know, um, <laughs> or like a really good Easter Bunny, you know, just um, bringing out something positive for everybody, giving something, um, you know, being a good bodhisattva. Uh, and you're learning a lot, you know, and I really see like the winds of change are, are kind of coming at your back and things are going to loosen up. Be ready for that. Greetings Pisces and welcome to your horoscope. Um, so I mean, today the moon's in your sign, so you know, you, you got this a little bit more wind at your back. Um, Libra time in general is not like, hey, I'm loving it as a Pisces. It's like, hey, other people got the power, folks. I mean, it's good for that mystical, magical diving in for you because that rules your eighth house. And so if you're learning about astrology or tarot or about, you know, mystery religions and mystery faiths and um, rituals for a more positive you, all of that's going to work out. You know, all of that's going to work in your favor. Um, it is having compassion on those that are unpleasant. It's never easy, but it is the ultimate thing that improves us. It improves our soul quality because we become the bigger person when we're able to do that. And, um, I mean, this full moon could bring money. It, it's probably going to bring some issues involving family, but most of it's going to be good because Jupiter's presence is there in the second house. So, I'm seeing you doing all right, and actually, if you ask other people for help with something during this Libra, Sun, Venus, and Mercury period, you're probably going to get the help you need, so that in itself is some good news, too. And, um, you know, even though Jupiter's retrograde, it's, it's going to go forward pretty soon. So I'm, I'm really grateful for you being here with me. I would really love it if you shared this video with a friend who's into astrology. Um, if you like the video, if you subscribe to me, that would make me even happier. And I, I just thank you once again for being here and wishing you the best. Om Shanti, 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 Om Tat Sat.